A major brokerage firm is reporting that if Donald Trump wins the election, Bitcoin will go to $90,000. But if Kamala Harris wins, it will go to $40,000. And a huge bank is using the USDC stablecoin in a big adoption move. And Japan's largest electric company is looking into Bitcoin mining. This is big. Let's break it down. Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Folks, uh, quick updates around Bitcoin. We got the price over $57,000 right now at the time of recording. As mentioned in yesterday's podcast and in my email newsletter today, we need Bitcoin to break through the 60K resistance level and build support so it can keep going upwards, right? Uh, it's not going to pump to 80K tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying, but it's going to stair step its way out of this consolidation zone. So this is a good sign. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how things play out. There are no certainties here, just probably abilities. And uh, I'm hoping that as the month progresses, it starts to climb out of this consolidations. I'm not expecting any major uh, pumps or so forth. That would be nice if that happens. But we know September is a bloody month for markets. So let's keep an eye on that. One of the key factors that is driving uh, the asset prices to rise, which includes stocks, cryptos, and so forth, is global liquidity, which I've been sharing with you guys for a long time. I historically thought it was the Bitcoin halving, but based on data and research and what some macro investors are looking at, I've learned that it is actually the money supply because every four years you have the election cycle and that coincides with the global liquidity rise because politicians like to print money and make the markets uh, look good, let the economy look good when the election comes around. Funny how those two things work together, right? Now, don't get me wrong, the Bitcoin having does play a factor, but not as big as global liquidity. And what we're seeing is that global liquidity is breaking out. It continues to increase. And here, one user, a uh, great analyst, Thomas, shared the following chart showing that breakout, saying global liquidity is moving up. Global monetary liquidity is growing at an annualized rate of more than 6%, the fastest annual growth rate since April 2022. The year-over-year -year percentage change chart is continuing to follow the four-year cycle. The last time this chart printed a reading of 6% plus with an upwards trajectory was April 2020. And we know what happened after that, right, folks? So the same story, different cycle. And I've learned that this is a key metric I need to pay attention to when it comes to investing, whether it's investing in crypto or even just stocks, folks, right? To see how the liquidity is flowing. And this is happening globally, not just in the United States. Uh, but speaking of globally, here we got news literally today from the Financial Times that Mario Draghi calls for an 800 billion euro EU investment to boost the economy. Uh, he's saying that this is a stop Europe from falling behind the US and China. <laughs> it doesn't matter what narrative they put on top of it. They have to keep printing. This is the fiat currency system. So these are one of the underlying principles you need to learn and have in the back of your mind as you're investing, whether it's in real estate or crypto or stocks. And obviously we talk crypto here specifically, and I do own some stocks, but it's important to understand this factor. The denominator, the fiat currency, they keep debasing it, and you need to put some of your money in assets to outpace that debasement, to outpace the inflation, so that you can continue to grow your wealth and protect your purchasing power. Because if you just leave it under your mattress, or in a normal checking or savings account, it's going to get demolished. Its purchasing power is going to get demolished, right? Uh, this is so important to understand what's driving asset prices. And uh, it's really eye-opening once you see it. You can't unsee it uh, once once it's been revealed to you. So um, incredible what's taking place. And uh, if you look at the Fed's website, the M2 money supply in the United States, look at this chart. It is on its way up. It's climbing, boys. And uh, the money printing will continue. Janet Yellen and the Treasury continues to inject liquidity. 
and uh, the Fed rate cuts are around the corner. So uh, all of these things are going to drive crypto prices upwards in addition to stocks and so forth. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm bullish. I don't believe the bull market is over. And as I've been stating, with these rate cuts that are coming and the money printing that's going to happen, we're headed into the next economic boom cycle. We're out of quantitative tightening. We're going back into QE. Now, that doesn't mean there's not going to be crashes and corrections on the way. Obviously, those things happen in markets. But when you zoom out on the chart and you look at the macro, we're in the next cycle going up. So uh, cheaper capital is coming because of the rate cuts. Now, interesting news coming out from Bernstein. Bernstein predicts a Bitcoin price of eighty dollars to $90,000 if Trump wins the presidential election or thirty dollars to $40,000 if Harris is elected. Now, there's a bit of political gamesmanship happening here. I believe Bernstein, they want Trump to win. I think many of these companies and people see that Trump's policies for uh, businesses is much better than Kamala Harris. Um, but regards of who wins, I don't think this is a fact actual statement necessarily. It's a bit of political gamesmanship, as mentioned, because of what I just stated, global liquidity, money printing, rate cuts, and so forth. Bitcoin has risen under Democrat and Republican uh, uh, presidents and so forth. So this is not a very factual statement as it is uh, a more of a hypothetical, but uh, Bitcoin's not crashing to 40K of Kamala Harris uh, wins. Now, you may say Trump is better for crypto legislation and for crypto businesses, and that is for sure, right? Because we see Trump has put out his policy and where he stands, we have not heard anything from Kamala Harris. And unfortunately, with her and Biden, there's been an attack on crypto. So you can argue that fact, but with regards to the price, right? Um, it does doesn't matter, guys, because at the end of the day, the main catalyst is money printing and global liquidity and that liquidity going into assets, right? Because Biden is in control. He's a Democrat right now, right? With Kamala Harris, what did Bitcoin do at uh, the beginning of 2023 to now? It has it ran up. So uh, the point that, uh, you know, Bitcoin's going to go down to 30 to 40K if Harris is elected, that is uh, silly. But uh, look, some political gamesmanship here. Um, so interesting uh, that they're saying this. So analysts at Bernstein predict a wide divergence in outcomes for Bitcoin, depending on who wins the U.S. presidential election. Donald Trump currently leads Kamala Harris 52 percent to 47 percent on the decentralized predictions platform Polymarket. So take this as, as a great with a grain of salt, because uh, this is why you need to be financially educated, because this is a narrative. Now, once again, there's other reasons you may vote for Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris, and that's fine. As long as they're factual. But this is not one of them, right, guys? I keep it real with you all. Now, speaking of Kamala Harris, um, some folks yesterday highlighted that there was no mention of her crypto policy on her new policy page on her campaign website. Uh, I think Kamala Harris and her campaign are dropping the ball here. Trump has the clear advantage. And when I say these things, people get triggered, right? I'm not saying go vote for Kamala Harris or I want Kamala Harris to support crypto so you can vote for her. That's not the point. As I've stated before, I want crypto off the election table. That's my point. Go vote for whoever you want based on other issues. But crypto needs to be bipartisan. That is how it's going to win in the United States. So if you have RFK Jr. supporting crypto, Trump and Harris, it becomes a non-election issue. That is what we need. We don't need it to be a ballot issue. I know it is because of Elizabeth Warren. But if you have the top Democrat of Kamala Harris saying, hey, I'm going to support crypto and so forth, then it's no longer a, a talking point and it can help rally the rest of the Democrats in the Congress to now work with the Republicans to get legislation through. That's the end game for me. Now, you may say, Tony, but I'm still voting for Trump and so forth. That's fine. I'm not here to change your mind about that. My point, once again, is to get crypto off the election ballot so that the rest of uh, the, the government can focus on it and get it going. Right now, it's one-sided, and uh, unfor that's unfortunate, but uh, hopefully we can get this resolved, and hopefully Kamala Harris comes out with a policy. But I'm not banking on this, so don't get me wrong. I'm not putting money on this as she's going to do it, but this is a major failure on her part. Now, an uh, interesting article came out today on The Hill, and it was written by former Senator Pat Toomey, a Republican out of Pennsylvania. Many of you may have recalled uh, he was a big crypto supporter. Here's the title of his article, Congress Needs to Enact a Clear Framework for Sensible Regulation of Crypto. 
Well, he's absolutely right. And here, Paul Grewal of Coinbase tweeted out an excerpt of that saying, it takes a tortured interpretation of the 1934 Securities Exchange Act and subsequent case law, including the Howard decision to conclude that it applies to most crypto tokens. Great statement there by Senator Pat Toomey. And of course, he's calling out the clown Gary Genser, right? Uh, scumbag regulator Gary Genser, as I would like to call him. Now, uh, those who are anti-crypto are feeling it in the elections. Uh, we've seen it so far on Super Tuesday and in the primaries. And here we got a report that Crypto Super PAC pours $660,000 into Senate race as U.S. election closes in. So let me give you the details here. The Commonwealth Unity Fund, a political action committee primarily funded by contributors from the co-founders of Gemini and Ripple Labs, has spent more than $600,000 on the election of Republican candidate John Deaton in the United States Senate. According to the Federal Election Commission records filed on September 6, Commonwealth spent roughly $330,000 on media buys opposing Democratic incumbent Elizabeth Warren in the Massachusetts U.S. Senate race. The Super PAC also spent the same amount on a media placement supporting Deaton. The media buy marked one of the first significant expenditures from a crypto-backed Super PAC since Deaton won the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate race on September 3rd, backed by crypto industry leaders, including the Winklevoss twins and Kraken co-founder Jesse Powell. The Republican candidate seeks to unseat Warren, who has served as Massachusetts Democratic Senator since 2013. Folks, big win for John Deaton, as I shared with you guys. And uh, I'm hoping that he's able to unseat Elizabeth Warren, who's the leader of the anti-crypto army. And uh, now I saw someone tweeted out about she sent an email out panicking. She referenced the Winklevoss twins and so forth that they're supporting John. So she's scrambling and uh, we need to get her out because she's the one that's been pulling the puppet strings with Genser and her cronies are at the Treasury and they're in different places. And, you know, she got Sherrod Brown, Brad Sherman and all these clowns with her. But you mess with crypto, you go against crypto, you're going to lose. So. Uh, we're seeing that trend it continue to grow, and I think it will because uh, the people who have been aligning themselves with Elizabeth Warren, the, the Warrenites, are getting their asses kicked in the, in the election so far. Now, tomorrow, we got a big congressional hearing, folks. It's the first ever on DeFi. I shared this with you guys yesterday, but just a reminder. So this will be held in the House Financial Services Committee um, at 10 a.m. Eastern. So I'll try to see if I can uh, tune into this and see if there are any major takeaways. But it's pretty significant that you have a hearing on DeFi. Uh, times are changing. Crypto is everywhere now. It's become ubiquitous. They can't ignore it, folks. It's in politics, TradFi, pop culture, and more uh, incredible stuff happening. Now, quick word from our sponsor, folks, and that is Gemini, which is one of the top crypto exchanges out there. I've been a user of Gemini for many years. I have accounts with many different exchanges, and I use them uh, for backups and so forth, but Gemini has been one I've been using, and they have great products, folks. They have an incredible exchange, fully functional, great app. They have staking uh, services. They have a credit card that they offer, and they have a U.S. bank stable stablecoin called Gemini Dollar. They also offer a great derivatives platform where you can trade uh, Bitcoin and all the, the other top altcoins. So Gemini is a full service exchange, um, obviously headed up by the Winklevoss twins who have been donating to John Deaton and uh, into the crypto super pack. Now, if you sign up with Gemini using uh, my code thinking 15, the link will be in the description. You can get $15 in Bitcoin when you trade $100 in Bitcoin. So uh, be sure to check out Gemini. It's a great platform. Now, we got big news that BBVA, the bank, incorporates the USDC stablecoin into its crypto asset service in Switzerland. Talk about adoption, folks. These banks are incorporating crypto many different ways, building with the blockchain tech, launching ETFs, and doing a variety of things. The bank is expanding its cryptocurrency custody and trading services to include USD coin, a leading stablecoin whose value is pegged to the U.S. dollar. This addition will enable BBVA's institutional clients to speed up their trading operations by enabling them to transfer value more efficiently with blockchain and secure their stablecoins into BBVA's vault. For those of you who are listening who may be still sitting on the fence when it comes to crypto, I don't know about this, I don't know if it's going anywhere, look at this news. 
How can you be bearish? How can you be uh, still on the fence after seeing news like this? And this is just one example. I mean, all of Wall Street is here. They're tokenizing, they're launching ETFs, and there are many other banks and stock exchanges who are building with this tech. Just go research it. The news is not covered by CNN. It's not covered by Fox Business and all that. It, it, you know, They're focusing on other things. But this is what you want to see if you're interested in investing in this asset class. Real world adoption from the biggest institutions in the world. Um, obviously, just last week we talked about Mastercard launching a crypto debit card. So things are progressing, and uh, it's really exciting. And as someone who got in in the market in 2016, we had nothing like this, no news like this. It was mostly fud, right? It was so hard to invest and hold back then because this was all taboo. There was the narrative: it's a fad, it's a scam, and so forth. And now the biggest financial institutions in the world are adopting and building with it. Moving ahead, guys, Japan's largest electricity company, Tokyo Electric Power, to use renewable energy to mine Bitcoin. What incredible news. I've been talking about this for years, that many of the energy companies globally, uh, they can adopt Bitcoin in a way that they can uh, create a new revenue stream and they can monetize excess energy and energy that would have been wasted. So this is incredible. And imagine if you get at least 10% uh, or even 20% of the energy companies globally doing this. Uh, and this will be an incredible way for them to earn additional income. That, that would be huge for the adoption of Bitcoin. I think this is a trend that's going to continue to grow, folks, as uh, bonds are not doing well and different things, investments are not doing well. That's why you see many pensions and endowments are now diversifying into Bitcoin uh, ETFs, right? Because the other traditional assets are not performing as well. Earlier in the podcast, I said uh, Bitcoin and crypto is the fastest horse in the race, as Paul Tudor Jones said, right, folks? So it, it's it's happening. I mean, it's, it's incredible news. Now, we got some interesting news from Tether here, which is a competitor to USDC stablecoin. Uh, Tether addresses $102 million agriculture investment. Land is crucial asset class. Uh, so Tether has quietly invested $102 million since July, buying 9.8% of the shares of Adekogro, if I'm saying the right, a NASDAQ-listed agricultural giant which operates in South America. Adekoagro, uh, Argentina's main producer of milk and rice, also produces sugarcane in Brazil and other crops across Argentina and Uruguay. Uh, a Tether spokesperson said the investment in land, an inherently scarce, crucial asset class that provides long-term yield, complements the pro company's prior investments in gold and Bitcoin. So this is fascinating because they're using another hard asset, which is land, to back their Tether or stablecoin reserves. It's fascinating. I, it's, I mean, on paper, it sounds really great. I just don't know the dynamics of it. But interesting that uh, they're doing this and they may be ahead of the curve here and it may be a smart move, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, fascinating, to say the least. All right, we got news that Ether.Fi to launch Visa Cash Card on the Scroll Network. The credit card from the Ether.Fi will reward 3% cash back and let users borrow money against their crypto collateral. So this is interesting. So Ether.Fi, best known for its liquid restaking service, wants to change all that with a new blockchain-based credit card, Ether.Fi Cash. It announced on Monday a plan to work with Scroll, a layer two network on Ethereum to bring the credit card to the market. So this is interesting. A lot of companies building credit cards and on and off ramps, and I think it makes sense. Now, uh, you want to make sure that it's legit, right? Earlier, I mentioned about the news about MasterCard launching their debit card, um, and which is actually coming from your self-custodial wallet. So you want to make sure you go through the fine print and all the details with these uh, platforms before you jump on them. Now, we got news here that OnRamper launches a crypto off-ramp service with MoonPay, Alchemy Pay, and others. So OnRamper is launching its crypto to fiat solution with partners including MoonPay and Alchemy Pay. According to OnRamper, the new off-ramp service will support 46 fiat currencies and over 500 cryptocurrencies in 200 countries. 
So that's pretty great, guys. In order for this asset class to get uh, mass adoption, bringing it to billions of people, you need the on and off ramps, right? They need to be able to easily get on and off, right? Whether they're investing and taking profits and all that stuff or converting and all, uh, you know, to different stable coins and whatever it may be. So it's great that these companies are building the infrastructure globally. This is great news for uh, the future adoption of the asset class. Now, Solana creator program DRIP raises $8 million in seed round. So Solana-based NFT drop platform DRIP has raised an $8 million seed round led by NFX Progression and Coinbase Ventures. The funds will be used to bring DRIP's mobile app to market and expand the development of its creator tools. So obviously, as a creator myself, this is cool. And uh, it's we need to build solutions in Web3 for different segments of the economy, whether it's creators, businesses, uh, both enterprises and small businesses, for entertainment, music, and all these things. So really great to see that uh, new solutions are recreated and these companies are getting money. And as I've stated many times, you got an idea. Now's the time, folks. Put your pitch deck together. Go to those VCs and hedge funds. Get your uh, millions uh, and, and start building. So certainly an opportunity here. Final news item, Snapshot X launches to enable gas-free on-chain voting via StarkNet. So Snapshot X has launched today, introducing a protocol that enables gas-free on-chain voting for decentralized autonomous organizations. Let me give you some details here. So it is introducing a new layer two based protocol that enables on-chain voting without the associated gas fees for DAOs. This feature powered by StarkNet's roll-up technology aims to streamline the voting process within blockchain projects by eliminating costs that have traditionally hindered participation. DAOs have traditionally faced a choice between fast, centrally controlled off-chain voting systems and on-chain voting that, while adhering to uh, blockchain's core principles, was often expensive and inefficient. Snapshot X seeks to address these issues by offering a cost-effective on-chain solution. So that's great, guys. In order to get mass adoption, you can't have high fees. You can't have slow networks. And I know that is an issue that plagues some uh, blockchains, not all. So an example would be Ethereum. Obviously, the layer one, not ideal for mass adoption. I think it's more ideal for enterprise adoption who care more about security versus speed and so forth. Don't get me wrong. I don't think they want to be waiting days for transactions. But the point is, um, you know, if you're doing tokenization, like BlackRock's tokenizing or Ethereum, they don't necessarily need a super fast transaction as if you're going to Starbucks buying a coffee, obviously, right? Um, but the layer twos that are on Ethereum, uh, those I think are for the mass consumer adoption where once again, you go to Starbucks, you're buying your coffee, you need it fast, you need it very quick. And uh, it's great to see that these solutions are coming in here for DAOs to make things fast and uh, make it more efficient. So. All great news for the continued growth and adoption of this technology, which is uh, going to drive higher prices. More people that come on chain, right? Metcalf's Law. Uh, I've often talked about that over the years. Metcalf's Law, study that and network effects. More participants on the network, the more valuable it becomes, the more stronger it becomes as well. So let me know what you guys think about the news. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to sign up for my free email newsletter on Substack. It's 100% free, guys. Be sure to check it out. Also, be sure to grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto, on Amazon. It's available in paperback and digital. Also available on barnesandnobles.com. Buy a copy to support the podcast. Buy a few copies for your friends and family who want to learn about crypto. This makes a great gift. Uh, it will help them to understand what's happening in the landscape of the industry. And if you bought a copy already, please, please, please leave a rating and review on Amazon. It will help on my rankings. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you all, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.